have an important word, and that word means that if you don't respect the land, look after the land properly, that the land will turn on you. And we see that today, that people are no are not honoring the land and respecting the land, and so we're we're, we're seeing, you know, the great fires burning, the great floods that are happening. The land is churning on us because of the lack of respect that's shown to Mother Earth. This is what I tell the government. Look, the way you're managing the land, as far as I'm concerned, you've lost the moral authority to govern the land. We're stepping in and we're going to show you how the land ought to be managed and protected. phone call from a band member who was over in our neighboring band, Ashcroft Indian Band, and said that there was a, a grass fire that had started and that there were about 50 mile an hour winds happening and, and that that fire was going to be on our community's doorstep about 10 miles away within only a couple of hours with some really experienced guys and I would say an equal dose of luck we were able to um, stop that fire from burning it down our whole community. We have a store and a gas station down the highway. There's a, a group of RCMP having coffee there. And I said, oh, what did we do? <laughs> they said, oh, no, we're just patrolling. We're, we had given notice of, of the threat of the fire. And I said, well, what, what about? And they described, and I said, well, what about us? Nobody came to notify us, so I came home. And we set up our own defense mechanism here. We organized ourselves, set up fire perimeters and looked, we, uh, we even gave a notice uh, to evacuate our community on our own laws and our own authority. understory that's where our medicines are that is where our food is that is where the wildlife that gives us our clothing that feeds us nurtures us that's where they live we've since time out of mind managed that and protected them because we have a responsibility of reciprocity as caretakers if we take care of them they will take care of us. It's much like the, the trees. The trees gives us their breath, and we in turn reciprocate by giving them our breath. Our people, Sequevan people, have the longest time series study of this land in the world. We've been observing, scientifically observing, changes in this land for 10,000 years. And what we need to be doing is out there collecting more information and data so that we can add to the knowledge base and make good decisions for the future. We've got people here that are born and raised here. All my staff are born and raised in Skeetjesen. They know this country like the back of their hand because they're out there every day. We've always had conversations about having a territorial patrol or having people out on the land just to make sure that you know people aren't mistreating it or you know over harvesting especially when it comes to hunting and things like that and it's so critical because as I've said the forest has been mismanaged and the reason it's been mismanaged is because the decision makers are not the people that live there the laws are created in Victoria and they're created out of lobbies by by industry or, or whoever else and those things they don't work because they're not coming from the land and our laws come from the land and that responsibility and that connection to it. It's about respecting knowledge and the best way to make decisions is to collect good information and data and add that to an existing knowledge base to develop it. We talk about doing things within the territorial patrol. We talk about looking after the fishery, looking after the land, looking after the understory, looking after the water, things like that. Uh, emergency preparedness, 
uh, landscape level planning. We're doing all those things. My, cat, my staff has been doing all those things without formal recognition from BC government that we're providing a service because we're positioned to better understand the land than anybody. We have more continuity. We have 10,000 years worth of knowledge to, to base our, our actions upon. The ministry in town has about six months worth a lot of the time. You know, a lot of those guys, uh, they're come and gone within two years. All the, all the money and resources the federal government and the province of BC has come from the land. And it's been, basically it's been stolen from the land. BC and Canada has done a pretty lousy job looking after these forests in my lifetime. That forest was a heck of a lot healthier when I was a kid, 50, 60 years ago, than it is now. When I was a kid, I could drink water out of any stream in the forest. These streams don't run the same way anymore. That forest is no longer forest. I remember that first night when we were sitting out keeping watch and looking up the mountain at the flames burning across the hillside and, and burning up towards the power lines and hearing the booming of the power lines up there that um, you know we're talking about all the things that are were gonna happen and in the in the coming nights you know seeing our land burn you know it was it was brought up early on they knew that there was gonna be a big mushroom Morel season the following year and you know some of the concerns that were starting to be brought up right away with the land because as we watched the land burn we weren't just thinking about our health and safety at that time but our land that was going to be changed for decades. With the fire area in such a fragile state we needed to make sure that decisions on the land base that happened now, we're not going to have a effect down the road that meant further years and decades of regeneration of that forest. Chief Ron with Skeechist and had been working with the company for a while and had asked them could you develop some kind of program to regulate the, the morale industry that's going to be coming in. Once that was complete they brought it to our table and, and we said all right well well let's do this. We've set up a permitting system. The buyers have to have a permit in order to have the right to buy mushrooms off of our land. Pickers have to have a permit in order to have a right to pick mushrooms off of our land. Otherwise, it's thievery. For far too long, we've suffered that thievery of resources off of our land. We are providing some services for the funds that they spend. We provide porta potties and have those serviced as well. The city of Vancouver actually loaned us all of their plastic garbage bins, so at every campsite that we have, in those designated campsites, we have garbage cans and our crews regularly pick them up and haul them out because we don't want that garbage left out on the land. And so that, in that sense, it's been a real success for all, of the, for all the campers and the buyers that they see that value. We've never had this opportunity before, and it's a great feeling to know that maybe you're going to be allowed to participate. Trudeau always talks about reconciliation and everything else. Well, this is maybe a way of finding part of our reconciliation. I see this as the first step to real co-management. We're sitting down on equal footing with the BC government deciding what to do on this fire. That's the first time this has ever happened in the 20 years I've been here, and I'm sure before that it was even worse. So this is the chance for First Nations to start getting reinvolved and, and start remanaging their lands. We've also been able to create some type of um, a program where we're monitoring what's going to be happening 
to our future land and making sure that, you know, when we're putting back for future, that we're putting back the right way. This program here is, uh, is right what I was looking for all, all these years. And I know it's going to grow. I know our training is going to grow. And it's going to get better and better. It doesn't have to be about the morales. There's a lot of other stuff out there that need to be protected. And we have our patrolmen out there saying, you know, look, at we, we're doing something different here. Some people's you know, initial thoughts might be, you know, I don't want to be regulated or I don't want any rules put on um, what I'm doing. But we, we've created a situation where they're going to have a conversation about the land. They're going to have a conversation about their shared values, about looking after the land base and looking after each other, making sure things are safe, you know, making sure that, you know, this fragile place is, is going to be restored because there are shared values between when, when people use the land. And the people you meet out there, like all the people from around the world, <laughs> it's been great, man. Like, you met people from, I couldn't tell you, all the countries there. Nice people, and we tell them what our vision, our goal is, and they, they well, yes, that's what they want, too. Over the last year, I've personally been able to witness some pretty amazing um, collaboration between the bands and the province in regards to the Elephant Hill and the, and the devastation that's happened. I think there's been a huge disconnect between industry, government and First Nations and this whole Joint Leadership Council has really brought those three groups and brought them together in a more collaborative way. We need to reach out, we need help from Good people outside. Our chiefs in 1910 said this, these people want to be friends with us, so we ought to be like brothers to them. We're prepared to share off of our wealth, but we also, they have to reciprocate back with us. And what is ours will be theirs, and what's theirs will be ours, and we'll help each other to be great and good. They said also though, their people have a duty and responsibility to see that the government does right by us. There's that real sense of um, we're all, you know, we're, we're all in this together. We all got to work together to make a better um, outcome. And that's what makes this so exciting. The future actually looks a lot brighter than it did a while ago. And um, I think we're, we're moving in the right direction. And I see that finally there's a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel in um, working and collaborating together. Our traditional laws and the way that we see the land, they're not a threat. They're not something that's going to take something away from the non-native person or the person that lives there. It's actually something that's going to enhance their life. It's going to enhance the way that they see and understand the land that they live on and, and really bring more value to a place-based living. The Indigenous view of looking at the world is about connection. It's about interconnectedness of all things and so when we start rebuilding those connections that's when we start seeing transformation.
Bye.